Nobel laureate. Uh, so uh, in 2010, Kostya won the Nobel Prize in Physics jointly with his colleague uh, Andre Geim uh, for isolating the 2D material graphene. Uh, and he was knighted for his contributions in 2012. And he is a fellow of the Royal Society. Uh, Kostya is currently professor at the Center for Advanced 2D Materials at the National University of Singapore. I believe he is joining us uh, as we speak from Singapore. Uh, so there may be a slight delay, you'll have to excuse that, uh, but we should still have him. Uh, and he's here to answer your questions uh, that you've been posting. And yeah, I'll try and catch any live questions that come up. So please do get those in if you have them. Uh, so yes, thank you very much for joining us, Kostya. It's a pleasure. It's really, it's really fantastic to be back to Manchester, even though virtually. So I was trying to, to go to come in person for the last I don't know how many months it doesn't work, but even virtually it's great. <laughs> Manchester is glad to see you again. Uh, so yes, I'll uh, I'll ask uh, questions as we go along. Um, uh, you'll have to excuse me. I'm using my phone because it's all on there. I'm not just texting while we talk. Um, so yes, uh, Kostya, our first question comes from Gyroman Anant on Reddit. Uh, so they ask. How did your life change after getting a Nobel Prize? Is it more marketing and less science now, or the other way around? <laughs> well, I, of course, it's, it would be silly to pretend that life, life doesn't ch change after, uh, after the Nobel Prize. Uh, my task was for uh, several years, I was really trying to, uh, I just told myself, okay, you, you don't change your life as much as as possible, uh, people got crazy before uh, uh, after after getting the Nobel Prize. So for many for, for many years, I was living in the same house, driving the same car. So uh, was trying to to to, to resist. Uh, same size wise uh, was uh, so the the first thing you learn is how to say no and. Um, and actually, uh, just pro probably even reduced the number of uh, of conferences I, I used to go. It's getting it's getting back quite uh, quite quite a lot now, but for a number of years I was trying to be strict and saying saying no. But um, and of course, it would be impossible to say that uh, you won't get any. Uh, ad hoc requests, which which are non non scientific, but more like societal. And uh, but in, in my case, I, I knew that you need a lot of experience, and uh, any politician would outsmart a scientist. Uh, whatever smart is the scientist, I was really trying trying to to, to take it with a caution, gain experience in in this. So uh, try to maintain the, the balance between science and and um, and uh, uh, just around science world. Um, I mean, it's uh, again. I cannot I, I cannot say that uh, I managed it well, but uh, I, I would say I would say it was it was okay. It could be it could be worse. And as you. As you know, I moved to Manchester. Sorry, I moved from Manchester to Singapore a few years ago, and actually that was uh, partly uh, to increase the the science or, uh, and and uh, the the science fraction. So actually, pandemic helped a lot. So it was for for a year, I'm really doing. I'm I'm, I'm staying in the lab, doing all the all the research. So you're right. It's a, it's a challenge, and it's it's not really for me to to say how well whether I succeeded or not. But I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so we've had a, a live question in the Q and A. 
Uh, what first inspired you to isolate and study graphene? Well, uh, I mean, of course, the, uh, I was e extremely lucky with um, with my supervisor and friend, uh, Andre Geim, because he introduced this style of work in our lab where uh, uh, we were doing those Friday evening experiments and just trying to to do things a little bit outside of the uh, of the of the mainstream research and at that time we were doing we were, uh, doing measurements on the single atomic movements of domain wall in the in 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 paramagnets but in parallel as friday friday evenings we were doing some small experiments there were some magnetic water experiment the gecko tape which was quite successful at the end and uh, and graphene was one of those experiments as well so i guess people know the story that uh, the idea was can can we make a transistor out of graphite because the mobility is high we we understood we need small uh, very thin flakes and it was uh, a challenge how to produce them and we, we tried several methods didn't work completely thrown it away until just one day um, our colleague was cleaning graphite and everybody know how to clean graphite with the scotch tape and then it was only left to pick up the scotch tape from the dustbin <laughs> nice so that that relates to uh to a question we've had as well so it's um the origin story of isolating graphene for the first time is always told in a way that sounds so casual slash accidental uh, messing around on a friday afternoon how true is this and what was this like from your perspective it is right. You see, it is absolutely true, but uh, you, you see, the no accident uh, or incident happens until, unless you actually push for it and and you stretch for it. And it was the idea of of, of Andre Gaim that we need to try uh, to make a transistor out of graphite. And then, okay, it, it's an idea and then you start searching and figuring out how can you do it and as i said for uh, we just tried several several methods didn't work completely just probably forgot about it but then because you thought about this and because uh you you actually you you were quite excited about this the idea that uh it was still sitting somewhere in your brain so as i said when we saw the way how people clean graphite for the stm experiment this uh, idea clicked back and and it was and after that it was it was all technical uh i mean it's frankly i, I think i've seen so many uh simple solutions for very complex problems in my life but none of them would appear unless you actually search for it and push for it and really spend spend days and weeks thinking about it so unless you unless you search even this accident won't happen yes that's a, that's a very good point that's brilliant uh okay so we have uh another one from reddit uh, so this is uh, a question from as batman <laughs> uh, who asks will graphene be the used be used broadly across many different market applications or will, will we see the rise of more specialized 2d materials for each application that are better suited well you see it's uh i mean um i'm not sure i'm i'm the best to answer the this question and let me explain why so when we started graphene of course i just told this the this story that okay one day we saw how to get graphene with the scotch tape of course that's not that's not the end of the story so the so the scotch day tape day indeed the first i got the first device the first operational device with 0.05 percent of the field effect within the half an hour i saw how the scotch tape, tape is done and then after that it was like a year of getting slightly thinner slightly thinner slightly thinner layers 
and uh, it, it, it took us uh, practically a year to get to actually graphy. Uh, but for us, it was extremely exciting. So uh, I remember I was going from the from a conference somewhere in, in Brighton, and then our colleague Sergey Morozov called me. Oh, I got really the few defects, which is uh, like three times. So oh, it must be less than seven layers of, of graphene, really. That's so we, let's rush into the lab and check it. So uh, the the reason I'm telling you this is that uh, of course the, the moment we publish our paper, we 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 never thought people actually bother. I, I never could estimate how many people do uh, carbon science because we were complete outsiders and uh, immediately people started to speculate well we can pr probably try to use graphene one day for this and for that and spend spending a year to go from 30 less to one layer i knew absolutely sure, for, for sure that graphene will never be ever used <laughs> I mean, I was, I would, I, I, I would tell people, you, you, you guys, crazy. It's, you, do you understand how? It, and then, and then I was, I was proven completely wrong. Only what, maybe four, four, five years later, people already got, uh, got, um, got square meters of graphene. So I was, uh, I was shocked. Probably most, uh, most of all. And, um, and then it was another another uh, stage that people started to say, "Wow, now we can get so so many graphs, so much of graphene and uh, high quality. Everything is going to be done from graphene." And um, so the, uh, I've seen those oscillations just going uh, absolutely ecstatic about it and completely pessimistic already so already so many times. And what is nice that on the background, what we see that those graphene products actually appear uh, appear in our life like uh, just maybe every every second month, like and many of them we don't even know. Like I was I was uh, absolutely surprised when one day um, a guy from Ford called me and said, "Well." Why won't you come and, and take a look at, at our usage of graphene? And then I had an occasion to be in uh, in um, uh, in uh, in in US, and uh, I went to the Ford factory, and, and apparently every single Ford car these days uses uses graphene composites for an application which we couldn't we couldn't even think about. So um, so. Things are actually happening, and there are there are many more graphene products which we which we know. So, and that's uh, and that's uh, then we realize. So, it became commodity, and for for us, it's like well, we we see this first flake ten years ago, fifteen years ago. But for 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 many engineers, they use it as a as a commodity material, and they and they put it there, and uh, there are so many of those of those products around that you, you probably don't don't even realize that. Um, I was I would really really love to see other materials to be as as ubiquitous as uh, as graphene uh, itself, and uh, I see that there are many applications where other materials would, would, would actually do much better than than graphene, but unfortunately technology of those is at the same stage as uh, as we are in back in 2004 and uh, of course if you ask me now is are we going to see modulators based on molybdenum the cell file from the current stage of, of technology i probably should say no but because i've say, i already uh, said no for graphene and i was com i was proven completely wrong well probably i should say yes so uh, but at least it's a, it's a good fun to 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 observe it, and it's actually one of those few things where it's it's a good fun to be proven wrong. Very much, yes. <laughs> uh, so we have a live question. Uh, so it says, "How do you how did you manage to find such an enthusiastic supervisor slash team that would be down to do fun experiments 
I think we all want to have that much impact and fun. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Well, it was it was really uh, um, a bit of from from the necessity because um, when I came to to Manchester for the first time, uh, so we, I, I basically I entered the lab and it was an absolutely empty empty room with only a turbo pump in it. There wasn't there wasn't anything at all. Just just turbo pump and a couple of chairs. That's it. <laughs> and 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 we, we, we basically had to think what what do we do? So you, you cannot stay stay still and wait, okay, I need my helium duo to arrive and I need my my uh, insert to arrive. So you just start you, you start start thinking about uh, what what kind of experiments can you do. And I mean Andre Gam is is he is really good at it and I was I was trying to to match his uh, 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 to match uh, his genius in this as well and uh, of course the, we had lots of enthusiasm and, and that's all, that's always good when you arrive to a new to a new place and you need to and you need to 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 prove yourself and then we we, we figure it out there is a small clean room and ernie was uh, was there and he allowed us to play in the clean room so uh, as much as we want so it was it was good fun and it was something new every day not only about graphing, about many other things. So, um, so I guess it, 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 uh, this freedom when you are not, we, we, we really don't carry any any burden uh, from the previous experiments on your back, and you just have to decide here and now to do. Yes, that's excellent advice. Yeah. I like that very much. Uh, so, kind of a little bit related to that. So, speaking of uh, Andre Gaim, uh, we have a question: Is it true that Andrew? Uh, Andre Geim uh, won the Ig Nobel Prize for a levitating frog. I don't know how much you know about that. But... Well, I mean, I was uh, uh, um, uh, no, I just, I just, um, uh, uh, I reminded him his his story. So, so, so the answer is yes. Uh, that's uh, that's that's true. And uh, I was uh, because we were. Uh, we were working in the high magnetic field lab in in Nijmeg, and I, uh, some of you probably went there for for the measurements. And Andre did did won won the won uh, the Ig Nobel Prize. And so there are many stories uh, uh, around the the frog. I, I would probably leave it to Andre or to Irina to. To tell those because it's not it, it's uh, it, it's really Andre's story, uh, but one of them. So so um, he went to receive the Ig Nobel Prize to US, but uh, but Andre being, being Andre, he was he was trying to play some some games and uh, and then he knew for that there will be lots of lots of um, lots of interest. Uh, from the country to uh, to 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 follow this story about the about the frog, and he asked me to go to while he is in the U.S. Uh, he asked me to answer some of the emails from the journalists, um, and uh, and uh, so pretending or uh, uh, saying uh, saying properly that uh, he is not really interested. In, in, in those interviews and the, the frogs is not really what, something what is what is uh, uh, what what's, what's what's interesting and then he gave me very very clear instructions uh, that okay you 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 check my email box and if there is an email from this journalist you just tell him exactly that uh, it's the so the thinking about frogs is the last thing on my mind and of course you should you should realize that um um i was just just a few a, a few months since i came for the phd so i was a, a complete fresher and uh and despite my uh, my mother is an english teacher and 
uh, so we, I studied English for, I don't know how many, 10 years in school, three years in the university. My, my English was absolutely, I mean, it, it is not very good now, but uh, at that time it was really, really rubbish. And uh, of course, I immediately tied back thinking about frogs is the last thing on my on my mind and of course the i i, I, I spelled the, the word last with you is uh, and and then it was uh, so of course the the reaction from the from the journalist was 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 a bit uh, strange why is it so lusty so uh the answer is yes so the the frog the frog was there and there are lots of lots of uh uh, interesting stories around it, and I, I completely encourage you to uh, to ask Andre or Irina to tell to, to tell about stories. Unfortunately, the uh, the interest around uh, from the journalist wasn't so great because in the same year there was another guy from Holland who won the Ig Nobel Prize, and his research was to uh, take images of couples having sex in MRI machines. And you can imagine that you know, both, both experiments uh, work with magnets, but if you have to choose between the flying frogs or images of couples having sex in MRI machines, uh, you would probably, probably yeah, you, your choice would be quite, uh, um, uh, quite clear. So, but but, but it, was, it, was, it was a big story. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, yes, we have another question from Reddit uh, by uh, Levan Pantsulea, uh, who asks, what material can be the strongest 2D material? Well, I mean, we, we know that, of course, the, uh, I think it is, it is uh, graphene, but uh, yeah, that's uh, and, and actually so there are there are uh, so the the Spanish group with Misha Constanson uh, calculated exactly how many defects you need to you need to introduce that uh, to increase the young modulus. I think several times uh, further. That's the that's quite a nice and beautiful piece of. Uh, uh, of, uh, of of science when you introduce defects, but your young modulus it actually uh, actually goes up. But I think it was it was proven that it was it was graphene. <laughs> Excellent. That's what we want to hear. Uh, so a question from Twitter uh, from uh, you called I know nothing. So this should be should be very interesting. Uh, what are your opinions on the ISO standard for graphene? Do we need tighter control on what commercial products can call graphene, and what would that entail? Well, uh, I think, I mean, ISO standards are, are probably useful, but uh, I know that there are lots of speculations around around graphene, and frankly speaking, I don't think it is it is easy to avoid, even if you put. Uh, so many standards there. Uh, it's, the, there will always be be people who would who would speculate on it. Um, and uh, I mean, uh, Andre um, has uh, the stories about uh, underwear being uh, being, uh, uh, being advertised as graphene with his his face on it. And then I had, I had similar problems in China as well. So, but I think. Uh, I think it's it's unavoidable, and but this is not, and it will be gone in a few years. And then, what what's going to to be left is just is the pure science and and pure engineering. And at that stage, uh, over over regulation is probably not very good because uh, again, it's the famous quite a seminal work from from. Manchester from Ian Kinlach and Bob Young, who showed that, for example, for composite materials, probably it's better not to have not one but three lens, so you get the, the maximum uh, the maximum uh, uh, enhancement of the of the uh, of, of the mechanical properties. So, uh, as long as we understand what we mean and uh, and we we. 
we don't fool ourselves. So that's the most dangerous part that we fool, we start fooling ourselves. Then I, I don't see a problem calling two layers material graphene or three layers material graphene. So, but of course, that that requires uh, quite quite uh, substantial amount of knowledge and experience. And uh, I think rather than introducing standards, we probably need to to have more events like this to educate people and to educate engineers. Yeah. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Nice. Uh, okay. We have a question from Andy S. Uh, how does graphene increase the clock speeds in logic circuits, and when will we see these applications? Ooh, uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, so that's the that's probably the most the most difficult part, and and uh, the the hope was, of course, that uh, because we can have uh, we, we can have the ballistic transport in in graphene even at room temperature at quite uh, a large uh, channel length so we could have ballistic um, ballistic transistors and there were there was uh, some uh, research and quite a lot of research from IBM for example uh, who were who were uh, working on it the, the problem was the contact resistance which allows you to uh, increase f1 but not ft and um, but I think the the this mobility story is is still there, and the uh, there is a switch now uh, from the um, uh, from the electrical uh, single processing to the optical single processing, and 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 that's where graphene can probably it, it will be easier to 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 fulfill the 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 requirement because you don't need uh you, you don't depend on the contact resistance it's all it's all um, it's all uh, capacitive coupling so there is no uh, current through the channel uh, so for me there are not many i mean there are some technical issues but it's those are those are uh the it's, it is possible to overcome, and they they build this large large um, uh, pilot pilot plant for the CVD graphene for the preparation of CVD graphene into into electronics. So I, I think that it is it is it is doable, and uh, we know that Samsung are using graphene these days for the contact resistance. So it means that it is possible to in incorporate it into silicon technology so i am i am hopeful that it will be used or maybe already used in uh, in uh, uh, in uh, semiconductor industry integrated circuits but again it will probably go some uh, some newish applications first like optical modulators like uh, like contact resistance work function management managing the material before it goes into the actual transistors. Now, guys, sorry, I, I cannot hear you. Oh, sorry, that was okay. nice. Uh, just to explain, if there's any, if you're hearing any background noise, it's because I'm just very upset that there's less than an hour left of the hackathon. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting to me a little bit. Um, we have some live questions. Uh, so uh, this is what I liked from uh, Frederick. What is your favorite application of graphene so far? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, so of, of course, those, those which do come from Manchester, right? Yeah. 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 Nice, well said, well said. <laughs> but uh, actually, there is, I don't know if you, if, you, if you guys have those, there is also this nice startup from Canada. And I really like those guys with the headphones. So that's cool. that was quite quite interesting, and I was really impressed that uh, it worked as well. Uh, and along that those lines, a question from Isabella, which I assume must be tongue in cheek. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But what made you decide to go to Manchester of all places? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, of course, I should say Manchester United. 
right? But uh, but uh, to be honest, uh, everything everything was probably against that. And uh, frankly speaking, when I came to Manchester, I, I I knew absolutely nothing about about it. And when I came for interview, I, I was I was basically I was basically bored in uh, in Holland at that time. So uh, because uh, we were working quite closely with with Andre, and then when he left, um, I was I, I basically I was I was working alone. I was maybe second year PhD, and it was it's it's a bit. I mean, I knew what to do, but it's uh, it's it's still a bit a bit lonely when you are a PhD student and suddenly you don't have anyone to to talk with. So it was it was a bit a bit lonely, and then when Andre offered me, why won't you come and uh, I give you a postdoc even though you don't have uh, a PhD or you, you don't even done half of your PhD? I said, well, that's a that's a good deal, even though I don't know anything. Plus, he he, he promised that I, I would I would learn to to speak English as well, and of course, it was a complete lie because. The moment I, when I came to, to Manchester for for interview, I immediately realized that with with this accent, I I mean I, I don't understand anything people are saying. So so that was the, his first lie. That I, I was, I was <laughs> and uh, and then um, of course um, uh, I flew from Holland to 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 UK on the. On the cheapest possible airline, so we just I flew to 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 Liverpool, stayed for a day for for the interview, and my and my return my return flight was uh, was from from Liverpool as well. Like I don't know, six o'clock in the morning. So <laughs> I thought, okay, I I don't need any hotel. I would I, I would go in the evening on the last train to Liverpool and then stay stay somewhere there. And I spent <laughs> basically I spent Friday night, and it was still like Friday before Liverpool was the uh, was the city of culture. So it's like 1999 somewhere. You can imagine Friday 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 night. Uh, just around around the around the train station in Liverpool, so I was I was absolutely shocked. And I said, "Well, yeah, I mean, to, come, to come to this country to make it at least a little bit better." So that's uh, that was my, my intention. <laughs> oh, excellent. Uh, so we have an online question. I think a similar one in the chat. Um, so it's about uh, you mentioned that you had a year of kind of work to. Once you you kind of got the idea um, to make it happen, so it's about what drives you in research. It could be common for every one good experiment. There are one hundred that go wrong. How do you keep going when it can seem impossible? Well, you see, it was. Um, I mean, I was uh, it, I, my my background was in low dimensional transport, and at that time, we didn't have many two dimensional systems at all. And of course, uh, so, so the the scientific hero was Klaus von Klitzen, who got the Nobel Prize for for the uh, quantum Hall effect. And then we suddenly get a completely new system, which which does work and it's easy to get. And we are the first ones, and they did so many so many phenomena which we absolutely don't understand. And 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 then we had. Um, uh, and then we had uh, uh, also uh, a very good, a very good collaborator who, who just uh, who showed us that you have this Dirac spectra in, in in graphene, and then suddenly, instead of uh, quantum mechanics, um, Landau Lifshitz book. Tom, uh, book three. You, you need to go to the uh, to the quantum electrodynamics book. Four, uh, book what was it? Uh, is it seven? Uh, and then no, six, right? And then and and then. So it was everything. Everything new. Everything so unexplored. So it was. And every day it was. It was um, uh, a new discovery because. If you have, if you start with 
hundred hundred layer thick piece of graphite, you at least you are destined to make at least hundred discoveries before before you go to to, to layer one, right? Or ninety nine at least. So it was it was a good fun every day, and it's it's um, I mean ninety nine layers over three hundred sixty five days. It's not it's actually it's not that that slow. It's uh, it's only three days uh, um, three days per layer. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, so I think we'll do one last question. Uh, so this comes from Reddit. Uh, graphene has been said to revolutionize multiple fields of human activity. Do we have any examples of how graphene holds its promise of material of the future? Where do you see it going? As I said, yeah, as I, as I said, we had, uh, I survived so many ups and downs in this. And what is nice is now we are in the so-called, in the calm stage and we see graphene uh, getting probably not exponentially, but steadily and readily into, uh, into the everyday life. So we know that uh, most of the, uh, of the batteries use graphene these days, right? So it's because BYD is the uh, BMW supplier. They buy a hell lot of, hell lot of graphene uh, every, every year. Uh, mo most of the mobile phones, they use graphene for the for cooling, so electronics-wise, there are there are those photo detectors which are commercial use use graphene, so it's uh, contact resistant. So it's probably nice that it is somewhere on the background, but at least it is it is working steadily and regularly, and it and and it goes there, it goes there uh, every day. So at least it, it gives me a peace of mind that uh, engineers are, are working. On it, or rather than, rather than uh, I don't know, politicians and and, uh, and uh, media presenters. <laughs> right. Uh, anyone? Any burning questions? Anyone? Good. Well, thank you so much for that, Kostya. That was fantastic. Thank you very much for your time. And, and thank, thank you so much. It's, it's a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And really hope to see you to, to, to see you in person, guys, very soon. And yeah, thanks for, thanks yeah. for keeping all these guys in a job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank Take you. care, guys. Thank you.